Good afternoon. Welcome to another NFL preview. My name is Matt Gannon of Fanshare Sports, and we are back with game by game, bet by bet preview. So let's get right into it. Thursday night football. Jaguars head to the Jets. And a bit of a, a bit of a weird line, some would say. Um, so obviously the Jets just lost that game. Against Detroit, they probably should have won. Blew it late. We were on the Jets. I really think they should have won that game. Clearly they didn't. So we get a similar line to uh, this week. And the Jaguars coming off that massive win against Dallas. So why is the line the Jets minus one? Everyone's on the Jaguars. But everyone's on the Jaguars at this, at this pick them line. But I'm going with the Jets. I really think the Jets this week, it's just – it's listen. So you're telling me the Jets are a one-point favorite against the Jaguars. They were just a one-point favorite, a pick against same line, against the Lions. Two weeks ago, the Lions just went – the Jaguars just went into Detroit and got absolutely blown out. And now when the Jaguars get trendy, why do you want to hop on them? They're a team that they – you never want to hop on the Jaguars when they're like, Okay, Jaguars are winning this week. They're just going to disappoint you. They're the Jaguars. So, I know Trevor Lawrence is still at quarterback. I mean, Zach Wilson is still at quarterback, facing Trevor Lawrence, obviously. But and he's he's just not objectively not good. But I think this Jets defense is going to do enough to slow down what the um, Jaguars are going to do. So I'm with the Jets here, minus one and a half. I already bet it. I already bet it, bet it at minus one, not minus one and a half. But I like it at minus one and a half. Um, DFS wise, um, no one really like turns my head. I would have to say you stack some jets because I really think this jets defense is going to slow down the Jaguars. So I would say stack some jets. You just have to play. If you're going to play short, you're going to have to play. You're going to have to play Zach Wilson. It's inevitable. And then I would say, stay away from Uzoma after that big week. He's not the guy to catch two touchdowns back to back weeks or even one touchdown. So I would go jet, uh, Zach Wilson, get, get him with two receivers. All right, let's move on to the Bills are eight and a half point favorites at the Bears. Last week, we were on the Bears at plus nine, similar line versus the Eagles, and they ended up covering for us. So a good bet, a winning bet, and I don't know if I love it as much last week. I mean, as I do this week, because we talked about the Eagles struggling a lot with running quarterbacks. The Bills are obviously don't have the best defense. They have a good defense, not the best defense, but they are, have done much better against running quarterbacks than the Eagles have. So that's all the Bears have going for them. I don't think eight and enough is really enough. And even it took a backdoor effort for them to cover against the Eagles. So I like the Bills minus eight and a half this week to get the road cover. I don't really love laying this big of a road favorite, but um, that's what we're going to do. Look at the DFS slate. I was high on Gabe Davis last week. Didn't really come to fruition. So I would just say go back to Diggs and Allen. Can't hurt. Bears wise, stay away from Bears. I would say. Okay, we'll move on to the Ravens and the Browns. I mean, not the. This is just not the right game. We're on to the Bengals and that was from last week. Didn't delete that. Uh, Bengals and the Patriots. Um, kind of a weird line. Uh, Bengals three point favorites on the road back to back weeks against teams they're obje- objectively better than. Um, last week we saw them get behind a little bit, and what they did in the second half, they absolutely dominated the Bucks. So. I'm going to lay the three on the road with the Bengals. I know it's kind of not a good spot, just a small bet, but I think it's just like I don't want to see the Bengals just roll the Patriots that they're objectively better than. I know it's not the best spot. I just don't want to miss out on, on this because it just seems like too easy. One of those that's too easy. So I know it's a it's a bad spot because the Patriots off, that, off the two road wings, I mean the two road games, they're back home now off that gross loss, they should be ready to come out and play football after what happened in Vegas last week. So they should be ready to come out a little hot. And if they do, we know the Bengals can rebound and get back into this game. So as long as the Bengals can right the ship early, keep it with, keep it close, don't fall as behind as they did last week, they should be all right to win this game on the road in New England. Um, is it a Joe Mixon week? Let's look. Let's bring up Joe Mixon's profile. We've been good at the mix-in when it's time. All right. I told you the uh, the attempts would go up in the past two weeks. They did. Only got 10 points. I think we keep riding the mix-in train because they've gone out the last few weeks since he's gotten – came back from injury. So let's just keep riding that mix-in train. All right. Seahawks head to Seattle. 
everyone's going to be on the Seahawks because the Chiefs objectively just don't cover spreads. But there's still the Seahawks, uh, the Chiefs. Oh my God, there's still. I'm just moving on very fast right now. Uh, the Chiefs are still the Chiefs, and the Seahawks. We I've tried to predict them reeling back a lot earlier than they than they are now, and I it cost me. So now we're seeing the Seahawks revert. So they're going to revert. They're going to keep reverting. Chiefs minus 10. Uh, they haven't covered in a while, but I think they lay this. They were just nine point favorites or 14 point favorites on the road. Now they're back home and they're 10 point favorites to, I know a better football team than the Texans, but I think it's still, they're a lot. That's, that's four and four, four points a lot in the NFL. So they're back at home against a, an objectively bad football team in the Seahawks. I guess one of the bottom tier ones, I'd say. So I think it's just a no-brainer situationally. Chiefs minus 10. All right, Lions at Panthers. I think this is a game you stay away from in every asset, in DFS, in betting. Lions need a lot to get that road win of the Jets. And the Panthers are a team that they just win weird games and they stay in weird games. Um, everyone's going to be in the Lions. Everyone wants the Lions to keep winning. I mean, I kind of want the Lions to keep winning. They're a fun team to watch, but... I just, as a Panthers fan, I could just see them just like ripping off a weird win when and losing draft capital. And I don't want to get involved with it. So I would say stay away from this game. It could get really ugly. We know Jared Goff's outside history and cold weather history. It's going to be cold in Charlotte this weekend. So I would just say stay away from this game. I wouldn't, I, I like, I wouldn't mind playing like even the Lions defense, I think could be a viable option, even though they haven't been good all year. Um, I would play a defense in this game. Either way, either one. Probably the Lions or the Panthers. Panthers, if you want to get really – probably Lions but or the Panthers if you want to get really, like, contrarian. All right, Giants ahead to Minnesota. We keep getting these Vikings minus four lines against team they're definitely better than. Um, we Are they going to put it together for once? Because they just haven't covered for us recently, but I'm going to go right back to them. The Giants are a team that plays close football games, but four, I think, is – is just enough for the Vikings to get past that line. And I think this Vikings team, after what they did last week, just proved to themselves that they could turn it on whenever they want to. Just start it from the beginning. Start it from the beginning. Dalvin off that master performance. Justin Jefferson had another great week. Um, is it time for Thielen? Probably not. I would stay, I would stay with the Dalvin and Jefferson if you're gonna go with Vikings, but they're all viable options. Uh maybe go to Hawkinson because he didn't do much last week, even though they scored a lot of points. He did not do much. So I like Hawkinson to bounce back and obviously like the Vikings to roll. All right, Texans at the Titans. Texans have been playing really feisty, and this game could be ugly. 36-point total for a reason, one of those weird AFC South games. I kind of like the Texans to stay in this game and cover, but I do think the Titans will win. They've been legit reeling, and now they have a matchup against a team they've owned recently. Derrick Henry is going to be mega chalk, but you might have to eat it because he probably found the end zone like three times, two times, and they win like they could I could see them winning like 21, 21, 10, something like that. But also I could see this game being 16, 14, and we're like, oh, this is such a regular AFC South, AFC South game. Titans score late to win. But I do like the Titans to get back on the win column. I wouldn't be surprised if the Texans kept it close. Um, Titans might be a safe money line per lay leg, especially since they're like I minus 200, so you can get them for fairly cheaper. Go Titans, Chiefs, Titans, Chiefs, Titans, uh, Bills. I think that could be a, a pretty safe bet at decent odds. Okay. Saints and the Browns. Um, Weird game in Cleveland, weird line. I would lean the Browns cover this game, uh, but we haven't, I almost called him Deshaun Kaiser. We haven't seen Deshaun Watson like be Deshaun Watson of the past, what, like two years since he's came back from suspension. Are we going to see it? Uh, the Saints are a, a kind of a valid opponent to get that verse, but I don't want to bet my money in DraftKings on De on Deshaun Watson. I would go with a Nick Chubb because we we've been haven't had that Nick Chubb performance in a while. Let's look at his box. Um, should be over here. Nick Chubb, please. 7-7, seven, seven, that's a decent price. Okay. He was 7-4 last week, and he got – he, oh, sorry, so last three weeks. So f and five, four of the last five weeks haven't been great. We're due for a Chubb game. I know he's questionable. 
didn't practice t- today. I thought I saw that he practiced Wednesday. Hmm. Monitor that Chubb situation. If he's good to go, I would go heavy Chubb because people are going to start veering off of him after what he has been doing. So I would go Chubb this week. I think Chubb's a viable option in this game. All right, Falcons at the Ravens. Lamar should be back in this game. And I think the Ravens are a viable option to bounce back. They've looked legit bad with Tyler Huntley at quarterback. Um, But the Falcons, the Falcons probably win that game last week with Mariota, but they didn't, obviously. So, still got, um, what's his name starting? Cincinnati guy. What's his name? I just cannot remember it. Desmond Ritter. Desmond Ritter starting from Cincinnati. And he just did not look good either. He's not, he's like kind of similar to Mariota play style wise, but he's just not the same. So I would like the rave. I think people are going to be on the Falcons because it's a touchdown in the hook. Good line. But I think the Ravens will cover this spread at home in the cold. The Falcons are a dome team. I probably will get some Ravens liability, maybe tease them down because I really am confident the Ravens will win this game. So I do like that there. Okay. Commanders and 49ers, they are, I promise the 49ers are not 38-point favorites. This line is seven and a half, I believe. Sometimes mistakes happen. Sometimes mistakes happen. Um, Before I put seven and a half, I'll put seven and a half up. Let me double check for a quick second. I'm like 99% sure that there are seven and a half point favorites, maybe seven, before I go on. Sometimes the producer, myself, messes up. Yeah, seven and a half. Okay. Um, Brock Purdy still at quarterback. He's just he's he's not really proving me wrong. He's just riding the ship, doing exactly what he is, and he's gonna make a career for himself. So good on you, Brock Purdy. You still be nothing without Brees Hall. But we've seen a, cl- a decline in in Kittle until that week when he just went nuts. So everyone was like, okay, Kittle, like doesn't have Jimmy G anymore. Can he like still beat George Kittle? And we saw it. Um, Chase Young might be back this week for Washington. Will obviously only help the defense. There's a low total. But I think the 49ers running game is still in, in, in quite, not in question, is a viable option here. So maybe a big week for McCaffrey. McCaffrey might be my big name I read up this week. I try to get one big name a week. So I'll try to go with McCaffrey this week in this game. I don't really love either side because I can see the 49 I mean, the commander's keeping this one close. Okay. Interesting game that a lot of people are talking about this week. Eagles head to Dallas. Uh, Jalen Hurts is questionable. It's looking like he's not going to play. I think either way, the Cowboys are going to win this game. Jalen Hurts plays. Jalen Hurts doesn't play. I'm going to bet money on the Cowboys in some form or fashion. Um, they played a great game in Philly a few weeks ago. Not long than a few weeks ago. Now they head back to Dallas. Um, obviously, the Eagles have a lot going on right now. They look amazing every week, but the quarterback situation, Goddard, shaky. Miles Sanders looked horrible last week, but the game strip is all messed up. And the Cowboys' defense has a, been a mess. Offense looks awesome, though. Offense looks awesome. It's a high total. The Cowboys' defense is not that bad. That's like as bad as they're going to play, especially with the messed up offense from, from Eagles. I think the uh, Cowboys win this game. And if Minshew's playing, I think they cover this minus five. All right. Raiders head to Pittsburgh. Ugly game. Wait, is this the line? Yeah, this is line. Okay, I thought it was Raiders minus two and a half for a second. But just because the Raiders are underdogs makes me want to bet them. If if this line was minus one, I was like, okay, Steelers underdogs at home, Tomlin, bang. But this is a game I feel like the, the, the Steelers, like in prime time, just kind of pick off. It's like, okay, the Steelers are still here. But the Raiders, I probably won't be betting this. We saw what the Raiders did in the first half last week against the Patriots. Looked amazing. Devontae, Derek Carr, Matt Collins was moving the ball. And now in the second half, they just cannot play two halves of football. They just cannot do it. So with that being said, I think you can only bet the Raiders in like halves if you want to bet it, but I probably won't. So like, for example, if you want to bet the Raiders, bet them first half, they cover bang. They don't cover just like double. That's not good betting. It's not good advice, but like it's what the Raiders do. They play every single game. They play one good half, one bad half. They got bailed out by Jacoby Myers last week. 
So that's my take on the game. I don't want to give out any Raiders because it's just like you don't know what you're getting. And when you're getting it, it's ceiling floor to the max. So stay away from this game, in my opinion. All right, Packers heads to Miami. I love Miami this week. Um, Packers off of a short week. Dolphins uh, need to write the ship. They need to get going. And now they're back home after playing in the cold for a bunch of weeks. They almost won last week in Buffalo. Now they're back home playing a Packers team who's just not good. They didn't look good against the Rams, honestly, even though they won by, what, 12 or 10, 10 or something like that. They didn't look great. Dolphins back at home. Firepower offense. I love the Dolphins this week. They might be my biggest play of the week. I already bet them at minus four. Might add more to that now that I'm saying it. So I love all Dolphins. I think this is a big week for Dolphins in DraftKings. I think we go with yeah Tuesday one. I mean Sunday one o'clock. Um, Tyreek's expensive. Where does Tyreek rank in all the receivers? It's two. I there's no reason that this should be that much of a gap. So just based on that. You got to go with Waddle. You just got to go with Waddle, stack him with Tua for sure, and get some Gasecki in there. Gasecki at three flat, he's very viable to get a touchdown. I think the Miami is a great option this week all around. Okay. You're telling me you're betting the Broncos as a favorite on the road at this point in the season? Impossible. You can't. Rams are the side this week no matter what. Like, there's no rhyme or reason to bet the Broncos. That's why they probably will cover the spread. You cannot bet the Broncos as a favorite on the road at this point in the season. It just – you can't – they're a mess. I mean, I know they figured it out last week with the ribbon, but, like, man, like, I don't I don't see how you can take the Broncos as a two-point favorite. I really just don't. So, with that being said – wait, what's your Russell Wilson say? Oh, this is from last week. Um, with that being said, I think the Rams are a viable option. We saw Cam Akers have a one of his best performances of his career. So will they go back to Cam Akers? I don't we, we kind of see history repeat itself. I don't think he'll get that trendy yet, but I think Cam Akers is a viable option at five two, not a bad price. So uh Akers I think is a good option in this game. All right, Buccaneers head to Arizona to face the Cardinals. I kind of love the Buccaneers in the first half to repeat what they did last week. They uh, they blew that game against the Bengals. They just literally blew it. So I think they they stayed at home last week. Now they're on the road. Get back to work. Come out hot. I think the Buccaneers first half, maybe a Buccaneers first half team total is a very good bet this week. I really think they will come out hot against the Cardinals who kind of have been packing it in. Uh, don't really look great. No Kyler, obviously. So I think the Buccaneers will come out hot in the first half and get on the board, maybe score 17-plus points. All right, Monday Night Football, Chargers head to Indianapolis, and, yeah, we get more Indianapolis primetime football. What more could you ask for? Um, Now the Chargers just keep winning, but what was the last two weeks? Now they have to control their own destiny. They can literally literally clinch playoffs this week, and uh, I don't see the Colts stopping them this week. I think the Colts are making a quarterback change this week. Quarterback. Yeah, Nick Foles to start. But Nick Foles would be the guy to come and win this game. Wouldn't he be the guy? Um, okay, but he would. But the Chargers' defense is getting more healthy. The Chargers' offense looks like it's back to uh, peak form like we like we predicted preseason, and they are rolling. You can't – I've been writing up a Charger the last, what, three weeks, four weeks, and it's been paying off for us every single time if you check the fan share article. So I think we just keep going with the Chargers. Um, I don't love the five, especially with Nick Foles' energy just, like, coming in. He just, like, be the guy to keep it close. But no Jonathan Taylor, obviously, for the for the Colts. So I think you go Chargers, stack them, stack a bunch of the Chargers receivers. I would stay away from Eckler after that injury. Um, so Herbert for sure. And then Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Josh Palmer. It's a coin flip between the two. Josh Palmer's kind of getting a little bit relegated out of the offense because the two big guys are back. But I can still see him having a decent game. Um, so I think you go... Herbert, and then pick two out of the three, or you pick one between, one between, Keenan and Keenan and Mike Williams. Then go with Josh Palmer. Stack those three, and I think that would be a good Charger stack for sure. I think they're going to win this game. Would not be surprised if the Colts keep it semi close, just because of the Nick Foles does things like that. 
Well, that wraps it up. We got a full slate of games this week, and let's win some bets. We've been doing fairly well on the show, giving you guys some bets and winners. So hopefully you guys are tailing some of what I say. Hopefully you're fading what's wrong. But I know I've made some of you guys winners. Some of you guys have reached out to me, and I appreciate it. So um, I think we've got one more show maybe. I'm not – because this is not going all the way to week 18. Maybe one more show after this week. If not, it was a great season. I appreciate you guys listening, and you know where to find me. Peace out. Have a great weekend and Merry Christmas.